Right, hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to uh, today's video and it's nice to see you all back um, and it's nice to be back as well. I've been really really busy this last couple of months um, for those of you who don't know uh, I've had a, a recent addition to the family. She's been taking up a hell of a lot of my free time, in fact to be honest she's been taking up 99% uh, of the time that I've got regardless of whether it's free or it isn't. So my ability to actually get around to making these videos for you guys has been uh, really really difficult. Uh, I, of course, used to be able to do uh, a PlayStation work and Xbox work and everything else most days of the week. Uh, and my four days on, four days off at work used to facilitate that quite nicely. Unfortunately now, uh, that is limited to a couple of hours uh, for one afternoon a week. But things are starting to settle down a little bit. Although in the next few weeks I'm hoping to be moving into my new house. Uh, with my fiance, so that's probably going to take up a little bit more of my time as well. Uh, so today is one of those videos that rather like the equipment I use video. It's one of these that I've been meaning to get done for quite some time. Uh, the main reason being recently I've been finding a lot of these comments and questions and messages and things have been cropping up and I just seem to be repeating myself over and over and over and over again. But it's easier for me uh, with the limited time I've got if rather than sort of like typing things out over and over again and starting to sound like a bit like a parrot if I can just sort of point you in this direction if you send me a message or anything like that uh, regarding this particular issue then you know you're probably going to find yourself here uh, because I've probably pointed you in this direction and it's not because I you know I don't want to answer you on a, on a personal level I, I would love to I just don't have the time and at the end of the day, if I can point you here, you're all getting the same information and I'm not forgetting anything or leaving anything out. I'm hoping that this is going to spark off a bit of a discussion uh, from findings from other people. So people obviously, you know, would do this for a living, will come on this channel. You know, I know they do. They, they message me to say they do. Um, so it would be really cool if some of you guys could actually take five minutes just to um, throw your findings in on what we're about to discuss. Today we're going to be discussing uh, in depth the... PlayStation 4 Blue Light of Death. Yeah. So for those of you who actually aren't familiar with it, and I can't believe there's many of you anymore, uh, the PlayStation 4 Blue Light of Death is very, very similar to the Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death and the PlayStation 3 Yellow Light of Death. I'm sure that you've probably heard of those by now. And essentially a Blue Light of Death is an ever condition which is displayed by a PlayStation 4 uh, there are several different incarnations, and unfortunately, um, not all blue lights of death are equal. Some are worse than others. Uh, some actually aren't that bad. Some are a real nightmare to try and work out, and some are just don't even bother trying. So, we're going to go through a few of the homes, and uh, hopefully, we're going to help you out. And at least, you know, if we can start you off on the right path in where to look, then that's great. Uh, if I can stop you from wasting hours of your time on an issue that you're probably never going to fix, then great, you know, this video has served its purpose. If just one person benefits from that, this video has served its purpose. And believe me, to be honest, I don't want to think about the amount of time I've probably spent wasted on this, <laughs> looking at some of these machines with these issues, because to be honest, it'll probably make me cry. First of all, it's important to understand exactly what a blue light of death is. Usually, um, there are what I like to call three main flavours of the PlayStation 4 Blue Light of Death. And, you know, of those incarnations, probably the most common one uh, that people are familiar with is the old two-second uh, Blue Light of Death. Essentially, that's where the PS4 starts. The PSU clicks, you can hear it click. The Blue Light pulses for one to two seconds, you hear a second click, and the machine shuts itself down. You can usually re-attempt to boot the machine by just hitting the power button again, you get the beep and the same process will continue. It'll come on for a couple of seconds, you'll hear the power supply click, you'll get one to two pulses of the light, the machine will stay powered on for approximately one to two seconds and will shut down. And it will do that forever and a day until the cows come home. So that's what happens with most uh, instances of the one to two second blue light of death. And what that often is down to is a bad connection underneath the APU. I'm not saying in all instances that that's the case, but I would say 95% of the time, uh, when you see that is your issue, more often than not, a reball is going, to, is going to sort it out. Now, occasionally you do get bad chips, you do get a dead APU, uh, but that's not particularly common in my findings. The PlayStation 4 does have no manufacturing defects, certainly in the earlier production runs where preparation of the board and the APU itself 
maybe wasn't the best. And there are quite a few instances where I've seen uh, where the top left corner of the APU actually does have some quite bad surface contamination on the pads, uh, which connect the BGA to the board. And those, to be honest, more often than not, actually affect one of the RAM blocks directly on the bus between APU and the, and the RAM block. They're quite unlucky because most of those connection points in the top left corner of the APU are actually ground, but one or two of them aren't. And in those instances where that's the case, over time, after a couple of years, you tend to find that your machine will exhibit that. Now, more often than not, it's sort of like earlier to middle run sort of PlayStations. I have to say the later revision ones I haven't seen too many of, but again, that's not to say, you know, I see a very, very small sample as a hobbyist. So more often than not, it's down to either an APU connection issue, which I, I would say 95% of the time that's the case, and occasionally it's down to a bad APU. I think I've only ever seen one or two of those, to be honest with you. But as I say, it's usually earlier production runs, the old 1003 and 1116 days as we see in, here in Europe. Uh, and as I say, it's usually down to dirty contaminated pads, uh, which is actually down to oil preparation in the factory during production. So it's easily fixed by Reball, and it can be permanently fixed by Reball because the issue is not actually a physical defect with the BGA, it's actually just with the preparation of the connection points between the BGA and the board. So if you can redo those connections and you can do them properly by an experienced technician with BGA rework, um, then of course you can fix it and you can fix it permanently, or as permanently as it's possible to get. Usually it's down to one of the, uh, the data lines between the APU and that first round block in that top left corner is where I often find that to be the issue. So the two second blue light of death is what I like to call a fatal error because the machine powers itself down shortly after you're attempting to power it up. So essentially it's a major component failure that the system decides it cannot possibly continue without the communication between these two components and consequently the power shut down before any further attempt or any damage can be done. And as I say, that's why you can repeat the process uh, and you can just power cycle it until you're blue in the face, but nothing will ever change. Occasionally you can verify that by putting a little bit of pressure on over the top of where the APU sits. If you're looking at the front and the back's obviously facing away from you, somewhere around the centre there, right on that right hand edge, if you apply a bit of pressure there, sometimes you can actually get the machine to boot. Um, it probably won't boot properly or it probably crash fairly shortly after. It's kind of nice because it will confirm one way or the other, but a lot of the time you know, pressure on top of the APU won't actually get it to fire. Uh, the only way you'll actually ever find that out is to actually reboil it. Reflowing is hit and miss. I don't reflow it, to be honest with you. I do tend to find that reboil is consistently effective, whereas reflowing really isn't. The, the issue is actually with uh, that connection point beneath the ball. Um, and that needs to be cleared and sorted out. For the, for the time it's going to take to, to properly reboil the machine, about an hour and a half, an hour and three quarters, you got to be bought it, right? Sometimes those two second blue light of death can be power supply related, and that's a, a fairly common finding that's banded around the internet. And what you tend to find is people will try and reseat power supplies and things like that. Uh, more often than not, they'll find that's not the issue. Uh, I will give you a fairly decent way of guesstimating whether that's the case or not, and that is if you power the machine on and you get the usual two second blue light of death symptoms and then you actually go to power cycle the machine again once it's shut down and it's dead and it doesn't do anything that's usually a sign of a bad power supply so if the only way you can actually re-attempt to boot that machine is to pull the power and plug it back in that's usually a decent sign that actually your issue is with the power supply and not with the APU uh, or related system component you know, because like I say, the APU isn't the only cause of that, but it's the biggest um, cause of that that I've found anyway. You know, like I say, 95% of the case in two second blue light of death where, you know, you can power cycle a machine, more often than not, it's APU. And more often than not, again, uh, a reball will actually resolve that issue. Uh, then we move on to the second sort of main category of blue light of death. Now, this one is pain in the arse and I'm not going to lie to you to be honest about I've spent more time wasting my time looking at these I would encourage you not to uh, and that is the constant pulsing blue light of death and this is the one that to be honest that most people found when uh, the PlayStation first launched and because of that uh, and because a lot of machines were actually thrown out from the factory with this problem and obviously the earlier machines had HDMI issues, the two kind of got amalgamated across the net and consequently a lot of people believe that constant pulsing blue light of death is a HDMI issue. 
it is, you know. Uh, I'm not saying it can't be. We have seen, in, in fact, on this channel, we do have a, a repair from hell video uh, where we actually see a constant pulsing blue light of death. And that is actually caused by the HDMI circuit. And occasionally it can be, but usually in my findings, the only time a constant pulsing blue light of death is actually caused by the HDMI circuit is in scenarios whereby there is severe damage to the HDMI output circuit. So I'm not talking like a broken port. I'm not talking about a failed HDMI encoder IC. You will find that the machine will still boot to a white light. You just won't get any display or garbled display or, you know, flickering, shadows, artifacting, all that sort of game. You don't usually get a pulse in blue light. As I say, on that particular video, on that Repair From Hell video, if you want to go watch it, in fact, if I can think on, I'll stick an annotation to it here. What you actually see is even that machine did boot eventually. All right, it took it 10 minutes to do so, but it didn't do it eventually. What you'll tend to find with a constant pulse in blue light of death is no matter how long you leave it there, whether you leave it there for 10 minutes, whether you leave it there for 10 hours, the thing will still sit in there pulsing blue light before it either gets better and shuts off uh, or you actually have to pull the power. Uh, now, with the constant pulsing blue light, the symptoms there are the PS4 will start, you'll hear the relay click in the power supply, and the blue light just constantly pulses. Usually what I tend to find is you'll get the hard drive and you'll hear the hard drive, you know, whirring away and then you'll hear it spin down so usually like a distinct click from the hard disk after about 10 seconds or so and then that's it and the machine will sit there and it will just halt until you know it'll do that eternally until you actually force the power off or pull or pull plug you know that is what i like to call a general in the condition okay it's not a fatal error because the machine doesn't see that as a major component failure, okay? So occasionally it can be caused by the APU. I tend to find, to be honest, in cases where you have a constant pulse in blue light of death, less than 20%, in my findings, I'm not saying this is gospel across the board, but in my findings of the machines I've seen, machines with constant pulsing blue light, less than 20% of those, I'd say, have actually been related to APU. Uh, the rest of the time, to be honest, it, because it's a general error condition, it could be anything. It could literally be anything. You probably find you won't be able to access safe mode. Uh, you can try and pull the hard disk drive out to see if you can get the machine to attempt to boot to safe mode. It will fail, but you will get some output on the display to say that the system cannot access storage, okay, in that instance. If that's the case, then you may have a bad hard disk drive. If, however, as I tend to find most of the time, pulling the hard disk drive makes absolutely no ends to this, then unfortunately you are in trouble. Having to actually work this out without schematics, without diagrams from Sony, without known good values to actually measure things against and check things against, it's a minefield to say exactly what it is. And consequently, the actual chance you've got of diagnosing the issue is very difficult. Sometimes it's impossible to do so in the time man. You know, you can sit there for hours comparing this value and that value against the known good board. So you can waste so much time. It's just not worth the hassle. As I say, you know, to spend an hour and a half, two hours on, on one of those machines and re-ball it or, you know, dismantling the HDMI output circuit, you're probably going to be wasting your own time. If you're doing this for a living, you're probably not getting paid. So, just don't. Unless you get very lucky and there's some obvious damage there, you're probably not going to resolve it in a, in a decent enough manner. Like I said, there's so many things on that board that to actually sit there and troubleshoot every single one of them. You know, I've sat there with a multimeter reading this value, that value, this value, that value of, of known good boards and compared. I've sat there for two or three hours doing it. There was nothing untoward. I've done that with a couple of boards that have been displaying this uh, this particular symptom. I like to recommend you channels and, and, and other videos. And, you know, a, a channel that I really do love to recommend is Lewis Rossman. Uh, he really knows his stuff. And him and Eli the computer guy make reference to something called the rabbit hole from hell. Uh, and it's something that I completely agree with. Uh, whereby you can chase an issue, chase it, chase it, chase it, chase it, but eventually you spend so much time or you invest money into components and things to actually fixing an issue that by the time you've actually spent so much time and possibly monetary expense trying to fix it, that actually you've chased it all the way to hell. Less than 20% of the time has APU rework, reball, etc. fixed it. So consequently, don't just jump in there and do it. Try and use your brain, measure stuff, you know, check around the... Uh, the south bridge for any failed components check around the apu for any failed or missing components ram you know there's quite a few surface mounts there check them to see if they're damaged or missing underneath the apu you know i've seen machines where you know the large caps underneath have been knocked off um 
a flash and around the flash chip. Again, check for any damaged or missing components. Read a few values from a non-working board. Those are things you can do in 10, 15 minutes. Those are good triage things that you can try. Anything outside of that, where you're then starting to suspect, oh, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's the other, and it's going to take you several hours to do so, you're probably going to waste your time unless you end up very, very lucky. Don't invest too much time looking at those. Just not worth it. I also tend to find it's not Southbridge Mediacom uh, system controller related, at least not physically. Consequently, I tend to believe that it's either flash corruption or possibly system control, the syscom corruption. Now, I've only recently built a flash programmer, so I can actually dump those now and maybe take a look. If it's syscom corruption, there's nothing we can do. It's a per box part, we can't change it. You may find different things. You may say, Andrew, I've seen loads of these and actually this has fixed it. Great. Please do pop it down below. You know, I'd love to know. I'm not saying that what I'm saying here is gospel. I'm only going on my findings personally. Okay. That is the conclusion I'm happy to come up with. And the third major category of blue light of death that we sometimes find is the six to 10 second blue light of death. And again, we do have a video on this channel of the eight second blue light of death. I think it's the eight second, or is it the six? Or the six to eight second blue light. It's something like that anyway. You give it a search, you'll find it. In fact, again, if I think on, I'll link it in here. Um, so that is where the PS4 starts. You hear the relays clicking the power supply. Uh, the blue light will pulse for approximately 6 to 10 seconds. You won't get any output on display. You may find that the hard disk doesn't spin, so you've no activity from the hard disk, you can't hear it. You may find that the fan doesn't spin, you can't hear that. Often that is down to initialization of a power rail. Now, those are actually controlled and initialized by the Southbridge. The Southbridge is responsible for bringing a lot of those up and those devices up as well. So you can find that if you do have connectivity issues with your Southbridge or a bad Southbridge chip, you can actually find that this is the case. I've seen a few of these and to be honest, most of the time a reflow of the Southbridge has been sufficient to actually bring those back online. Uh, in the instance of the video that I've linked in up there, it actually changed the issue. So I went from having a six to eight second blue light death to actually having a, what I would call a standard sort of two second blue light death reboard the APU and from that point on everything worked fine. So there we actually had a Southbridge and an APU issue. So I think that machine was actually dropped uh, but we did manage to recover it and in a fairly decent um, amount of time as well. The other one that I saw actually was just a Southbridge issue uh, and again a reflow was enough to fix that. So I tend to find that with Southbridges unless you've got a actual physical issue with the sound bridge, more often than not, the reflow is sufficient for the sound bridge. But again, there are a couple of variants on the 6 to 8 second blue light of death, so these are ones to watch out for. The other variation on the theme is actually the same 6 to 10 second blue light of death, but you don't get a click from the power supply. Now, I've, not, I've only ever seen one of these before, and it wasn't actually that long ago, and funnily enough, somebody else on the net actually saw, has seen a few of these, and actually came to the same conclusion I did. Uh, and they actually suspected, rather like me, that it's actually a bad system controller. You can actually remove the syscon and actually try and resolve it in, but more often than not, in my instances, that hasn't sorted anything at all, and it's actually down to corruption uh, or physical damage to the actual syscon itself. As that's a per-box part, we can't change it uh, without some sort of major surgery, then again, that is not one that you want to be spending too much time on. So if you've got a 6 to 8 second blue light of death and there's a click, you've probably got a bad syscon. So... Again, don't waste too much time. The other sort of flavour of the theme as well, actually, coming to think of it, uh, is a variation on the constant pulsing blue light of death, is what I like to call a three beep blue light of death. Now, the three beep blue light of death is, is not good. So you will hear the system speaker go beep, 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 then the machine will turn on, you'll hear the power supply click, you'll see the blue light pulsing away, and that'll be it. Until you either pull the plug or press and hold the power for around eight to ten seconds before the machine shuts off. That is either system uh, controller issues or it is a bad flash, in my opinion. The work of any of the major BGAs does not seem to contribute to uh, repairing that. It's theory that I've seen a couple of other techies uh, actually throw out there that it's bad flash or it's bad syscom. You know, sysco it ties in with my thinking too. Uh, so a 3B constant pulse, pulsing blue light of death, group it in with the other constant pulsing blue light of death. So don't even bother. Nail it up. <laughs> Give it back. So, that brings me on to my next point, and this is something that somebody actually asked me not so long back, and that is, they asked me, is it actually worth getting into 
trying to repair the blue light of death. Is it actually worth doing? Is it something that I should consider doing as part of my sort of day-to-day uh, servicing of, of PlayStations? And to be honest, much like everything else in this world, I'd say you know, well, that ultimately depends on you uh, and depends upon the scenarios that you find yourself in. So, to be honest, that, that, that question there is something that you can ask of BGA Rework in general. Is it really worth it? Uh, if you're happy to take the two-second blue light of death machines only, then yeah, sure enough, you know. Uh, if you're disciplined enough to take those in, uh, then absolutely, yeah, you know, you can you can fix those relatively easily, you know, within an hour and a half. More often than not, you're probably going to repair the issue. But because, as I say, you know, in those instances, the e-ball will actually repair the issue and it will repair it for a, a good degree of time because the issues, more often than not, are not physical defects with the BGA itself, but it's actually with the preparation of the board and the BGA during manufacturing. So when it's a manufacturing defect like that, yeah, you've got a good shot of actually repairing them uh, and actually having a, a long-lasting, worthwhile repair that the customer is actually going to get some value out of and that you aren't going to get back on your desk in a week when it's failed again. So there are some golden rules behind getting into BGA rework and certainly when it comes to the old PlayStation 4 Blue Light of Death, okay? So the ground rules that I'm going to give you here is, you know, bearing in mind, as I say, the amount of time that I've spent wasted on some of these, these ground rules will keep you sane, okay? So I'm not telling you this for my health, I'm telling you... <laughs> for your mental health, okay? Don't be tempted to spend too much time on constant pulsing blue light of death or six to 10 second blue light of death machines. Because as I say, those have some very, very inherent nasty issues, which I think more often than not are actually the cause of the fault. You know, you're probably not gonna fix it through reball. You're probably not gonna fix it through reflow. You're probably not gonna fix it just by looking at this one component or this series of things and you're probably gonna get lucky and fix it. Because more often than not, you're not, okay? So just do yourselves a favour and don't be tempted to spend too much time. As I say, to quote Lewis Rossman and Eli the computer guy, ch spending too much time on those sorts of faults is just chasing a rabbit hole to hell. You will sit there all day and you won't find anything wrong and you, you'll be banging your head off the table. I've done it myself. You know, I've sat here thinking, I will work this out. I will work out what is wrong with you. Truth is... There isn't one thing <laughs> that's actually wrong with them. It is a general fault. Uh, it's just signifying the fact that there is something wrong, but absolutely nothing to pinpoint what that fault may be. You will be there all day, and I'll tell you what, you will get... Even if you did manage to work one out, you'd spend so much time on it that it wouldn't be worth your while. And the next one that slides across your desk will be something completely different, I will more or less guarantee you. Do not be tempted to do it. As a hobbyist, it's annoying enough to waste your time, but if you're doing this for a living, to spend one and a half to two hours reboiling something just for it not to work at the end and it to be just as knackered as the was the minute you started working on it is demoralising and you ain't going to get paid because you're probably doing your now fix now fee sort of service. There's a lot you can do in that time. You know, you can change, you could probably change four HDMI ports in that time. Just go do that instead. Yeah, <laughs> you could actually reboil a two second blue light header machine actually in some way. So, what else have we got here? Well, I'll tell you what, don't be tempted to touch a system which has been evidently previously tampered with. That's a, that's a great one, is that, I'll tell you now, because unfortunately, back in the earlier days, you know, say 12 months ago, 12, 18 months ago, if you got a PlayStation across your desk, it probably had warranty seals on it. People didn't bugger about with them. But again, rather like the old Xbox 360s and the PS3s, people have started taking heat guns to things and putting them in pizza ovens or just general ovens, you know, putting them in freezers, wrapping them in towels, you know, I've started to see some where the APUs have been shimmed, and you're thinking, oh, fuck's that? Putting washers on heat sinks so that they exert pressure on components in the boards to warp them out of shape is bollocks, okay? It doesn't fix anything. It will last a week if you're lucky, but I'll tell you what it will do. It will completely ruin any chance you have of ever getting that machine working properly ever again, okay? In fact, I have one that slid across my desk, I think it was last month, uh, it was actually sent in. Uh, unfortunately, the machine came in, it was exhibiting some rather strange faux overheating problem. Uh, it had a knackered HDMI port, we replaced the HDMI port to actually find that some, you know, when we actually dismantled it, uh, a couple of washers fell out uh, from both screws on the heatsink. What the hell's going on here? 
Uh, that would certainly explain it because you know there's too much pressure, he's talking too much down on the board, and it actually ended up crushing the BGA. When we got it back up, of course, uh, it lasted around five minutes before it overheated. Uh, there was artifacting all over the display, and within a couple of hours, that machine went to a constant pulsing blue light, and it never recovered. There's nothing wrong with the board in that, in that particular instance. I know it's dead APU, and it's only a dead APU because somebody shimmed it. We could have reboiled that machine. We could have got it working perfectly again, but because somebody didn't want to spend that 50, 60 quid to pay somebody to reboil it and actually get it get it right and actually would rather have spent two quid going out B and Q and getting a packet of uh, washers. Fortunately, they actually ended up costing themselves a couple of hundred quid in a new PlayStation. A dead giveaway, to be honest, usually if somebody's been anywhere near that board, the uh, the original thermal paste is actually a pretty good giveaway. Uh, it's fairly distinctive stuff. It's fairly obvious if somebody's been in there and tried to change it. Uh, again, you know, most people tend not to be too clever about cleaning flux and, you know, stuff like that off, so there's usually residue around the board or under the chips. Uh, again, you know, people who don't know what they're doing and attack things with heat guns and stuff, they'll get things too hot, they'll get too close to the heat gun, they'll discolour the BGA, you'll tend to find burn singe marks on it, walk away, nail the thing back together and give it back. Or, again, just use it for spares or sell it for spares. Not spares or repair, though. Just spares, okay? Little devils, don't don't even be tempted. You know, at the end of the day, you've no idea what somebody else has done with that machine. And at the end of the day, if you're doing this for a living, you're probably going to have to warranty that machine for the next couple of months. If somebody's already had a good go at the APU and you've no idea how or what they've done to it, how they've treated it during rework, how can you possibly warranty something where you can't guarantee the condition of that component, where you can't guarantee the longevity of that repair? Don't give yourself the headache. Don't give yourself the hassle. It's just one of those things, just give it back. And then ultimately you've got the the issue of cost and the time to learn these things. And so the equipment's really expensive, of course, for BGA rework. A decent rework machine like the Jovi RV8500 that you see in use on this channel is about 1,500 quid here in the UK. Uh, and then you've got all the stencils and the ball jigs and the balls themselves and the fluxes. And it can run you a couple of the grand, you know, it can run you a couple of thousand pounds. Or several thousands of dollars or whatever else it is in your currencies it's very time consuming it's incredibly difficult work it's quite disheartening when you can't get things quite right uh, but you know if you stick with it you'll get there but you've got to get scrap boards and practice like buggery and, and it's good and it's liberating it and it's a very very useful skill to have if you're working in consumer electronics because a lot of devices these days have bga and just for dealing with playstations and things i'm not entirely sure that it would be worth it to be honest with you because i don't think you're going to see enough uh, machines with the two second blue light of death that nobody's touched you know that you can guarantee or you can warranty for a decent period uh, to actually make that money back in anything like a timely manner it is useful to have it does enable you to do different things so you know obviously you can preheat things you can get lots of heat into the board which is great for doing anything like controller sync issues where you're going to have to replace the, the bluetooth wi-fi modules it's great to be able to take off south bridges and reboil those and things like that. If you do anything like laptop or MacBook work, you know, whereby, you know, Syscon, you know, Syscons and um, SMCs and things like that, it's really useful to be able to swap those out, obviously, uh, where those are faulty. But for the initial outlay and the cost and the time it's going to take you to learn that, you know, you'd be much better off advised to be honest starting with something like, you know, doing HDMI ports and sort of like, you know, spending a couple of hundred quid in a decent rework station and a decent hot air station, uh, you know, a decent soldering iron, uh, and actually just sort of like, you know, spending a couple of hundred quid on that uh, and actually getting some decent experience and, and you know, repair and de getting some decent quality repairs in that, then you are actually spending upwards of several thousands of pounds uh, just to reboil a couple of APUs. And then you've got the other thing to consider, and that is. At least where the PS4 is concerned, most of the time that issue is down to a manufacturing defect. You can actually, you know, reball that chip and actually be confident that more often than not the issue is actually down to the physical connections rather than the chip itself. But that's the issue with BGA in general, you know, is that most of the time BGA is down to the internal construction of the chip that fails. More often than not, it's the physical defects within the chip that does for the BGA and not the solder balls. Or, or the solder connections beneath the chip as is so often banded around. More often than not it's a failure of the actual internal construction of the chip. Uh, wire bonded BGA and things like that, yeah absolutely fine because the, the construction is completely different. You know, yes you can rework those till the cows come home. 
In the case with the PS4, it's not wire bond. It's actually, you know, it's the internal bumps within the chip. But those are not faulty. Those those types of BGA, more often than not, are, are what the issue is. It's more often than not a physical fault within that BGA. Certainly with things like the PS3, RSX and the cell. It's not actually the solder balls. It's not the connection beneath the chip. It is the chip itself that's faulty. You can reball that chip and the heat will actually make connection within the, inter, you know, the internals of the chip. And it will work for a couple of weeks, but it will go again more often than not and that's because the issue is actually not down to uh, the connections of the solar balls it's actually within the chip itself you know so as I say in, in cases where you have no manufacturing defects like the earlier PS4s and things BGA rework and reballing yeah absolutely you know go for it uh, whereby you've got bad SMC's on MacBooks or laptops and things like that where you know the SMC is bad where it's got a physical fault it's like yeah you can you, know, you can reball it you can, well you can't reball it but you can replace it with a, with an old good compound you can actually have a decent shot again, working again. But with things like the PSD, RSX and things like that, most of those now are toast. Um, and yellow lights, to be honest, is because the chip itself is defective. Yeah, you can swap an RSX. You can't really swap a cell without a lot of work. You can't swap a PS4 APU without a lot of work. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts. It's what you're happy doing. But... It's a lot of work and a lot of expense to do, you know, a couple of jobs and, and actually in the grand scheme of things not make all that much money if you're going to do this for a living. So I, I'd say you're more suited uh, to actually go into other areas of repair, certainly initially, than you are just to dive in with BGA repair. So yeah, that's my take on it. Uh, and I'd love to hear yours, of course. So if you've got any experiences or opinions uh, with regards to any of the information in this video that I'd love to hear it drop me a message or drop me a comment down below uh, you know I'm a hobbyist some of you guys who do this day in day out will have seen this multiple times uh, on a daily basis you may know something that I don't great stuff pop it below and I'd love to hear it and uh, you never know we'll follow this up in a future video maybe uh, we'll certainly try and follow up in the comments uh, you know, I am still here, I'm still kicking around, hopefully as this video will show you, I'm hoping that in the not too distant future we're going to get a bit more time to do a few more of these videos and cover a few more things. I do have some videos in the pipeline that I do want to get done, that I am meaning to get done relatively quickly. Obviously it's as time allows, stuff crops up. Um, I've been meaning to get a couple of bits done over the last couple of weeks, it's not happened because, you know, stuff's just... Stuff's cropped up at the last minute. It's taken my time away from actually being able to do that. Uh, and that's that's happening a lot at the moment. And I think you can probably appreciate why that is. So, you know, it is nice. We're just shot a quarter of a million views on the channel. Um, actually, considering all the deletion shit that we're going off before <laughs> Christmas, we're well over a quarter of a million views. We are steadily increasing subscribers. I know a few buggered off recently because... You know, obviously I've not been producing videos and that's understandable. Um, but do stick with me. It is nice to see that figure still going on. Do stick with me if you, you know, have come across this and you were subscribing, you left because you thought I'd stop making videos. Come back, you know. We've, we're still we're still here and we're still going to be doing bits and pieces. I do have more in the pipeline. Hopefully this week at some point uh, I'm going to actually get a chance because it's a quiet week this week. You know, I'm hoping to actually get some time to do some filming. Uh, we're actually going to go into... Uh, the flash corruption uh, issue which causes controller sync issue on PS4 and actually repairing that. We're going to go through how to build the programmer, we're going to go through how to install it, we're going to go through how to use SPI way to actually dump the flash, we're going to go through how to manipulate the flash, reprogram the flash rather than actually install it on the PlayStation and actually get those controllers working again. So we're going to go through some of that. Uh, we're going to go through repairing some uh, some BD-ROM controller boards. Uh, I've got one that's faulty that isn't working. Uh, we're going to do um, a APU swap on, on a board uh, that I've got that's faulty, uh, which is actually one of mine. So yeah, we've got a few bits and pieces, you know, I've got a few Xbox One things to get done, um, like actually replacing a hard drive uh, from scratch when, you, you know, we've got one there where we recover the data um, on a green screen of death, but we're actually going to do one. What if you can't do that, you know, and your data's completely gone because your hard drive's completely dead? Well, we're going to go through that as well. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks... We're going to get a chance to do a few of those. Obviously, anything else that crops up in the meantime that I think will be useful, that I do get a chance to get done, I'm going to try and get done for you. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for watching this and coming back. 
uh, you know, it's been a pleasure. Uh, don't desert me. Don't leave me just yet. I am still here. If you know, I've been kicking around the comments. I do check every day. Uh, so if you do need me for anything, you know where I am. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, love you, and I will see you all, boys and girls, on the next vid, which hopefully won't be too long away now. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Please comment, there and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So, um, TTFN.